tap into the flow state and as soon as you go into the flow state you're you as soon as you realize you're in the flow state you actually go out of the flow yeah, state yeah and and you know what you know what is a great state to be in when you get so much power from going ultra instinct and one of the ways you can do that is by picking up a triforce or maybe a delta force okay okay i like where you're going at delta force coming back up here in losers top 12 round one going up against TJ13. Yeah. Because guess what? Wait. Because Sonic's a really good character. I was going to say, you got to go fast. We do got to go fast. And this bracket's been going so fast. I mean, it's, it's been going so it's fast. It's 7 o'clock and we're already close to being done with the bracket. We're in the we're in the top cut of the bracket. Impressive bracket performance here at Garden Brawl. And that's what you can't expect from this tournament series if they ever run it again. I'm sure they will. I think this was a good time for everybody, right? I anchor the head TO is definitely more of a melee guy, and melee did have those big numbers, but ultimate still a very solid turnout, right? In turn, as we are getting turned in to game number one, TJ13 already opening things up with a little bit of chip, but gonna get stuffed out under platform. Delta Force is going to be looking to use Boomerang here to control space, slow the pace of the game down, and just disrupt these spin dashes. It's hold the platform at all costs time because once Sonic can put you into the platform and start to control those himself, it's almost impossible to chase him down with a leap. If you can hold your out underneath it, you can lane him right into your sword and your neutral air and have a field day. Yeah, and neutral air is going to be such a good tool in this uh, matchup in particular because it is a constant hitbox and because spin dash is such a hard move to challenge, Nair is one of those options that you can use. But uh, it's looking like, oh my god, TG. TJ13 almost had a chance to get an early stock there against Delta Force, but not quite able to do it. I really like that F smash from him, even though it doesn't find its mark. That one as well. But if you, you get caught on the playing aggressive there, you just die. And if you don't, the platform positioning or their initial dash backwards, right, protects you from any form of punishment. Plus the utilization of this bomb just to throw out a little bit of a hitbox ox and a hurtbox to just stop Sonic, stop that spin dash in its tracks, and again, to slow the game down. Link isn't that fast a character, but where he excels isn't through his frame data, it's through making you play at the same speed he does. Ooh, yeah, he's trying to make him play at his own speed and going all the way out there to get that back air. Amazing start from TJ13, who is looking to make top eight of this tournament. This is a top eight qualifier as the 22nd seed. That would be an insane run indeed, my friend, but all great runs start here with those red shoes on a blue blur. You gotta find your way back to stage and get those feet on the ground if you wanna start moving on fast though. And TG13 going to do so at least for the moment, but still trapped in this corner. Not a lot of room to work with. That homing attack is dangerous, but the early up smash from Delta Force not gonna find its mark and able to reset the situation. Yeah, Delta Force struggling to find the KO right now. Sonic at 145% and TJ is continuing to put on the pressure. I mean, this player just got off of a game five nail biter set against Stir the Kid, and we're seeing that he is still, you know, wired off of that adrenaline, and he is playing so well right now. Yeah, oh, the homing attack! Is he gonna finish this? I think he already did, my friend, because there's no way for Link back, but through the blast zone, Delta Force there, er, holding on to the, with the up special to like maybe try and catch out something over aggressive to like force a stock trade but what it does instead is allow tj13 to get optimal stage positioning to run away and now play sonic with a two stock lead right this is what you never want to see if you're fighting the blue blur is really wide stage sonic is at three stocks you're at one stock because he can just do this for four minutes he can do that for four minutes but the up throw is going to do it and yeah i mean i don't know if I've never seen TJ play, I'll be honest, and I don't know if he's the type of player who will want to go for that campy strategy. So let's see how that develops right now. Ooh, trying to get an F-Smash on the ledge. Yeah, he's definitely trying to end this game right here. Another F-Smash and getting the, the forward air edge guard and Delta Force messing up the, the bomb. I don't think I've ever seen Delta Force drop that before. There's a first time for everything. Yeah. And that just goes to show how good of a player that Delta Force is, that he... You've never actually seen him drop that. That is not an easy thing to do very often, you know, but Delta Force is very good at it. And on top of that, that just shows the amount of pressure that TJ was putting on Delta Force to mess up something that he is so comfortable at doing. Yeah, and you saw there, right? Like getting caught in the bomb pole on that rising arc of his jump just meant that 
when he dropped down afterwards, unfortunately fell a little bit too far away. A little bit surprised to see Delta Force going back to PS2. Ooh, again, these platforms being higher and the stage being so much wider, a full 16 units, in fact, wider than the next longest stage width-wise we have here in Ultimate, means Sonic just has so much room to work with. Mm -hmm. And TJ is definitely using that uh, distance to his, his advantage, starting Spin Dash all the way in the left side of the corner there, making it so hard for Delta Force to get any hits in right now. Okay, I like some of this pressure. However, he's just not able to convert it into anything, and it's giving TJ extra opportunities to reset his feet back on the ground. Once he does, Sonic gets to forward air you, he gets to push you to the corner, and he gets to go for these edge guards. They literally use anything and everything he wants. I love the idea from both of them. Throw out the early stone scabbard down air, throw out, out, out the attempt with the up air to find the stock and close it out regardless. Both players swing early, but neither finds their mark yet. Neither finding their mark, but ooh, Delta Force with a cheeky, he just, uh, he just reversed them completely with that up B, but, TJ answering right back. Uh, the question is though, where does he go from here, right? Because an answer is one thing, but you got the whole rest of the test to pass, my friend, and Delta Force keeps changing the answers midway through. Ooh, this opening would have been a great start, but just not able to capitalize. Delta Force doing a great job finding his way out of Dodd, looking to back up some damage and gets a corner situation for his trouble, but still just has to give it up. Sonic too fast to keep up with. Yeah, we're seeing Delta Force already putting out his offense a lot better than he was in, in game number one. We're seeing that punish game that we know him for be more uh, aligned in this game. And we're trying to see if that he can convert that into stocks more often. The four tilt is not going to do it. Trying to just throw the bomb at him, maybe blow it up in the blast zone. But yeah, TJ not going to get, let him do that and trying to get another edge guard here, going all the way into the blast zone to get that back here. Bro, I mean, he reached all the way for it, and as you mentioned, found his mark in immaculate fashion. And TJ has been executing these edge guards better than anything, right? We have not seen Delta Force struggle to get back to the stage in any matchup like this against any player in quite some time. But TJ is doing a great job making it look near impossible for Hyrule's hero to find much work at all, unless those feet are grounded. And he's literally just rolling around him in circles right now. Yeah, rolling around him in circles. And like we said, using the length of the stage to his, his advantage, but Delta Force trying to find the stock right now, 137% on Sonic. TJ doing a great job of avoiding these KO options and, you know, living to very high percents on most of his stock so far this set. Hold on, I like the Ash attack. I like the bomb toss forward there. So much pressure going out one, two, three times, but just in the scramble, nothing finds his mark and able to reset at one last time. TJ13 getting the edge guard. He's been so perfect here and he's gonna keep that streak going waffle every edge guard for tj has been so immaculate i feel like he either gets a stock or he at least gets one hit you know gets some percent puts delta force in a awkward position the pressure he is exerting in these situations is not been matched by delta force so far i mean look at that one all the way in the blast zone and he did a, a similar thing on this one right here listen call delta force a football and call tj 13 franco harris because he's making these edge guards look like an immaculate reception right now Just absolutely unfallible with the way he's catching out these routes back from Link time and time again. Now though, he's got the potential set on the line. And while he may not have been here before, you know who has many a time is Delta Force. Yeah, he has definitely been here before and we are seeing him try to get back into the swing of things with a 79% string on the Sonic, but TJ is not letting up the gas, getting an uh, opening of his own. Oh, dude, they're going back and forth right now. It's just no one finding a, a solid opening right now. Until un, until he does, until Death the Forest just finds that forward air. Yeah, I like the uh, pressure here. Going to back toss, pushing for the back air to try and find an intercept. Doesn't get it, but then instead resetting the scenario, looking to do it all over again, my friend. And and you know what? You know what? When in doubt, why not stutter step after that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good option. And we're seeing TJ use it very, very strongly in this game. I feel like how many F smashes have we seen him hit? Like three or four in this entire set? That's crazy. I mean, we, you don't see that as Sonics. Sonics is not doing that. We say TJ has better F smashes than Sonics. I, I'm saying Sonics, it. Sonic does do that, my friend. Yeah, he does do that. <laughs> I know.
That being said, TJ813 looking a little bit like his brother in blue if with the way he's throwing out those F smashes left, right, and center. Or in the meantime, though, I like the toss. I like the bomb catch. I like the just kind of the lack of respect for what is an item, right? Something you can grab from from TJ13 against Delta Force. When it's bouncing, when that hitbox is active, it can be a little scary. But as long as you are willing to grab it rather than just swing through it, Sonic doesn't have too much to be afraid of from Bomb. Yeah, definitely does not have a, a lot to be afraid of. You are correct there, but we are seeing a lot of different things that he has to be afraid of. It, more specifically, that Nair. And as you say, he doesn't need to be afraid of the Bomb. Uh, he gets hit by it right there. and. Delta Force trying to hold the stage positioning, but Sonic so fast just battles right back in. And okay. gets a huge combo. Hold on now, if you're TJ13, right? You are like, okay, percent down, but I'm not out of dodge yet. Hey, yes, I lose my stock here, but I'm still in this one. That was a nice stock from Delta Force. Or I can still answer back. I just need to get one edge guard. I just need to get one scenario. Delta Force, though, doing such a good job holding under these platforms and keeping those feet on stage at all costs. Yeah, trying to get this that edge guard that you alluded to right now, but not able to do it. Delta Force with the opening and forces a reversal situation here. What's the option there? I mean, it's a great option off the ledge. He's not dead. He just went too deep. He went. It, it was one of those things where if you watch it at the end, and from TJ13, before he gets reversal, he just stands at ledge and looks for an F-Smash. You saw that the last two or three interactions, he just stopped going for these edge guards that, again, we keep talking about being utterly immaculate when he does attempt them. But I think here at the end, he kind of got a little bit of an Icarus syndrome, right? He flew too close to the sun, and the, mac the wax on those wings started to melt a little bit. He feels how close he is but he cannot let that get to him if he wants to come out on top. Yeah, like you said, in that game number two, he didn't get very many uh, edge guards, and it felt like one of the, some of the reasons was that Delta Force was doing a better job of dealing with the edge guards, but also just not being put in those positions to die all the way in the blast zone as often. So let's see if TJ can force those situations more in this game number four. Yeah, looking to create a little bit of a bounce house with this bomb. So much pressure, so many bounces, as keeping that hit on, hurt box on the bomb active as long as possible. Just control space. And even though there's chip fight, these are just stray hits, not really establishing a full advantage until this point. <laughs> He's found 80% from doing so. Yeah, he's done a great job so far, but as we know, Sonic can do, can wrap up that percent pretty quickly with these combos that we know him to do. Trying to get a spin dash there, but Belt Force not going to allow him to do it. And now we're back to neutral. And it, it is interesting to see the neutral distance in this matchup be so far away from each other. Neither of these characters want to be in each other's faces. I like the spacing with the attempt for the F-Tilt there. Right, low risk, high reward options as Delta Force is known for that up smash is more of the same. And yeah, the hero time came to play. Yeah, the hero time definitely coming to play here. Maybe came a, a two games uh, later than we thought, but definitely came. But TJ is still ready to play and ready to answer to those options with that F smash at the ledge that we, he's gotten so much mileage off of in this entire set. He absolutely has Waffle. In the meantime, though, the question is going to be how much more mileage can Delta Force get from just shooting these arrows, holding these this inter edge of platform, right? Creating space in a way that you have to jump in, you have to either homing attack or spin dash to approach him Ooh. under this platform. He has locked down those two op to those two options and then punished those options. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. So far, TJ13 has not had an answer. Yeah, he's definitely not had an answer so far. I mean, Delta Force is definitely finding his spacing in this matchup, and he is doing a great job of punishing Sonic every time he has a bad approach. But we're seeing TJ really, really struggle to get this. And if Delta Force is able to force these ledge trap situations, he's gonna take stocks just like we've seen right there. The fade back auto cancel on the fair to find that F-Tilt, definitely not something TJ13 was expecting. And you can tell by right, a little bit of matchup unfamiliarity at this level, even now by right, in game four, Delta Force still catching you out with some trips and traps that, that are basic on some way, right, against Lynx at this high level. Yes, they all do it differently, but you can see, right, there are times where he's still figuring out what's the best way for me to deal with 
bomb in certain places. What's the best way for me to deal with Boomerang? And Beldivores is starting to make him pay on the compound of that over the course of this set. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm loving it from Delta Force. We're, we're seeing the adaptations. This is why he is a power rank player in New Jersey. We're seeing that despite being down 0-2 in this set, keeping calm, realizing that there are adjustments that you can make and doing a great job of making the adjustments in real time. That is the hardest part. Because sometimes people realize what they have to do, but they aren't able to put it into practice. Now, speaking of putting it into practice, if there's ever a time for TJ13 to activate that in practice ultra instinct factor you were talking about before Waffle, it is now. He is pushed down to potentially tournament stock and tournament stock, it will be, it came, it went, and it's game five. It is because game five. I read this game score backwards. Yeah, and uh, TJ, despite have, using Sonic and despite having one of the strongest forward smashes in the game is not, uh, is going to be susceptible to that reverse up B to get caught and get completely reversaled in that situation. And we are going to a game number five and we are going straight back to PS2 where we have played every game so far in this set. Yeah, lo both players locked and loaded here. I think really liking in the measured pace that it allows them to play at, to feel each other out for extra adjustments. And while Sonic obviously liked it for the platform height and the width, I think the way Delta Force is playing, he really likes those same aspects about the stage right now. Yeah, and we're seeing any time that Delta Force has space between him and Sonic, he's very good at keeping that space. Using the boomerang, using the arrows, using the bomb to try to keep the space. And then anytime Sonic is in his space, he's hitting that he's hitting that neutral air button because it is such a good option in this matchup. But these are the edge guard situations that TJ has capitalized off of. Can he do it again is the question. He catches the jump there. Is he able to do another one? With the own F smash and he is. And TJ is up in this game number five. And even though that like, finds a ledge trap at the end with that forward smash, right? It was the faint on the edge guard, as you mentioned, Waffle jumping out and then back in to set up for it. The condition and lane Delta Force into that approach angle to find the stock. Now Delta Force once again, right? Just trying to take space slowly with that shield. Play it slow, play it defensive. If you're the blue blur, you need to overwhelm some of these choke points in those situations, like there with Boomerang, like there with Boomerang, and and around the pull of these projectiles, right? Because if you can take space then, Link has no way to stuff you out. Yeah, for sure. And TJ is in a, such a good position to take this game number five, up an entire stock and up, and already has 76% on Delta Force. What can Delta Force do to get back into it? I feel like it's gotta be a lot of rinse and repeat neutral, but TJ is, is willing to play that slow game, it seems like. Yeah, you find something cheeky with Bomb here once or twice, maybe three times, if you're unlucky with it, by doing a great job of finding these continuances so far. But Delta Force, while he has the chance, is ultimately up to TJ13, because if TJ13 just runs away here, it's a large gap. That being said, so much smaller now because in the 15 seconds we've been talking, we'd, that stock went away. Yeah, and Delta Force has been trying to, you know, get the deficit down. And we're seeing that the, the little steps that he's making every so often to try to get there. And it's been really good, just good to see. But how long can he hold on to this stock is the question. If he's able to hold on to this for a long time, I could see him evening up the game in no time. Uh, and I think we're starting to see a trend that way, right? You're seeing TJ13 start to slip a little bit on the composure. Or, or you can see he, as both these players lock in and heat up, and he's shaking his head, literally muttering to himself as he's getting hit there with the one hit, two hit jab lock. He's gonna go for the one, two, three reset. Not opting to take a stop yet. Delta Force feeling very composed. Oh, and you saw the little pop off as he took that stop. TJ13. Feels like he's sweating with everything he's got. Yeah, and TJ13 is the 22nd seed of this tournament. He is feeling the nerves. This is to make it into top eight. He is realizing I might be, I might win Delta, I might win against Delta Force, which is the last thing you want to think in this situation. And Delta Force just doing everything to not lose this stock. Another unsuccessful edge guard from TJ13 almost led to a ledge trap situation for Delta Force, but instead led to a stock for TJ13. This is his last stock game number five. Dude, the spring there to mess up the timing just enough, where you have to pull it early so you explode there is huge. And now we're right back even just like this. As you mentioned, Reed, 
TJ13 has every opportunity to close this game out. He just needs to take a breath and stay cool, calm, and collected. But Sonic only knows oh. one way to go, and that's fast. You cannot let your heart rate follow that. But right now, I feel like Delta Force has him right where he wants him. And I love that he took a second on that ledge situation to just compose himself. I love that in the game number five, it's so easy to rush those kind of interactions. But right now, pass to chance. to get like two or three openings against Delta Force, who is a one or two hits away from ending this game. Wow, oh. he, he punished him for picking up the item. You get put in a couple frames for doing so. And oh. he called it out. And then just a stone scavenger, but it's not gonna be enough. PS2 so incredibly wide. TJ13's got a chance. He has had a prayer, hope, and answer once, twice, looking for the swing for the fences. But right now, Waffle, he cannot find it. He's getting the hits, he's getting the damage. Oh! And this could be it for TJ13. This is an edgeguard situation. This game has oh, been made. This set has been made in those kinds of situations. And now Delta Force has the opportunity. Oh, the boomerang messing him up. Okay, now TJ13 gets his turn again. Has to get away from Delta Force driving this landing. He's playing so patient. Composed even with his back against the wall at nearly 200%. Even a strong hit in air is close to closing this one out. Waffle. TJ13 just playing composed. He senses it in the bag. He just needs to play for that stock. He knows one hit, one interaction. Here's the edge guard opportunity. Oh, and that was a back air we've no seen way. so many times from DJ13. Delta Force knew that he was going for it and punches him with the upbeat. But what a performance from both these players. And you can see, right, at the way they both popped off, TJ13 leaning back in exasperation as Delta Force popped off next to him putting his hands in his face because he knew he was that close to oh. a top eight. And what a set that was, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. That okay. was insanity. Oh, we need to do some, we need to do some breathing technique practice after we check out the replays of this set because my heart rate is a little bit through the roof. Yep. I got my, I got my Fitbit going here. Let's, All let's I check say, it out. TJ13 absolutely cooked that set. Absolutely cooked. The edge guards, immaculate. The on the fly bomb counter play, really cool to watch. Plus, just like, I feel like he picked his spots very well, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like he, there were very few times he was getting called out swinging too aggressively against Delta Force and was really willing to just let Delta Force commit first. And that was the back air we, we got used to TJ13 going for, and Delta Force knew that in this last situation he would go for a similar back air and that was the defining moment as we see delta force get back into this set uh he was down 2-0 and he was you know he's the eighth seed he was definitely the favorite in this game very it's not very often you see the favorite of a set go down 2-0 especially with a seed difference like this so huge huge shout out to tj13 for forcing a situation like that well, listen, you might want breathing techniques, but you know what the folks at home want, Reed? They want more Smash Bros. And we've got some banger encore action, some carpool action, if you will, coming on up next, loser's side. We have got CT's very own G Extreme coming back to stream up against someone who I believe we haven't seen on stream yet today. Zero to None, also known as Free K4. Yes, so not sure if we've seen CTN today, but we definitely saw G, G Extreme who unfortunately was not able to get the set over floppy fail. But as I said, you know, th there is two brackets. There's winner's brackets and there's loser's bracket. And Look at this pop off, man. Oh, it's a good ass pop off. Like, like the pop off and the sigh and exasperation. That's a clip, Delta Force, that you just like, like when you go back and you retire, right? And you say, I'm retiring from Smash Bros. That's that's, what that's you the your clip kids. you put in your re like in your as the stinger, right? Is that pop off as your opponent sides back? Like that is a movie clip, right? Yeah, there. yeah. When 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 you go and have kids later in life, you go show your your, your kids. You know, I was I was 13. 